Hey everyone, I'm Brett and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today we are looking at the Radian Compressor, which is a quick tune recoil spring assembly made for the Glock 19, 19X, or G45. As you can see, I have their Ramjet Afterburner Compensator on this Glock 45. The link to that video is going to be in the upper right corner, so if you haven't seen the Afterburner review yet, be sure to click on it and check it out. Now, the topic of the video is going to be a review of the actual compressor itself, whether or not it's a good product, and I recommend it, and I'm also going to be looking at what is the best spring weight to complement the Afterburner Compensator or possibly any Glock 19 compensator. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because once I select my desired spring weight, I run an entire magazine of Federale HST 124 grain plus P rounds through this thing to check reliability and you will be impressed at how flat this thing is shooting with plus P ammo. This video was originally going to be about my Langdon Tactical Glock 45, uh, but I was about to flame it for having a really horrible trigger job. So I'm talking to Langdon Tactical right now and giving them a chance to make a case or make it right. So if you want to see how that turns out, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you know when that video goes live. Now hopping right into the video, let's take a look at the actual Radian Compressor itself. Uh, do I recommend this product? Absolutely yes. If you are looking for a way to quickly swap out recoil springs on your Glock 19, 19X, or G45, then this is the way to go. Taking a closer look at the compressor, you're getting a stainless steel guide rod that is fluted, that has compatibility with Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 Glock 19 length slide guns, and you are getting the ability to quickly swap out springs. I can't actually show you how to swap the spring out because YouTube will think that I am showing you how to 3D print a machine gun and they will completely demonetize this video. That punk pulled a Glock 7 on me. You know what that is? It's a porcelain gun made in Germany. Doesn't show up on your airport x-ray machines here and it costs more than you make in a month. You'd be surprised what I make in a month. But to give you a very high level general idea, you put this thing on a table, you compress the spring, put a little tool in, Top comes off, take the tool out, spring comes out, new spring on, compress it, tool in, top back on, tool out, and you're good to go. So the compressor comes with three recoil spring weights, the factory 18 pound, a 15 pound, and a 13 pound. Now this was designed around ISMI springs, so if you can find those springs in any other weight, in theory, you could quickly tune those springs into this guide rod as well. Now, if you were to get yourself a separate stainless steel guide rod with, let's say, an 18-pound captured spring on there, you'd be looking at around $60 plus an additional $10 per spring, so for three sp springs, which would put you at around $80, and it would be a pain in the butt to swap those springs out. For around $80-ish, you get the compressor, where you get those three springs and the ability to quick tune it and compatibility with generation three, four, and five Glocks. To me, this is a no-brainer if you're looking for the ability to swap spring weights in your Glock. Reasons that you might want to swap springs around in your Glock is if you're taking compensators or cans on and off of your gun and you want to be able to swap between the most efficient recoil springs. Maybe you want a lighter spring on there if you are arthritic or you're going out shooting with your significant other or a child that has trouble racking the slide, you can put a lighter weight spring on there so that they can actually manipulate the firearm. Maybe you like playing around with hand loads and figuring out exactly how flat shooting you can tune the gun to shoot and you want to experiment with springs. Or maybe you're just like me and you want to experiment with which spring is going to work best for your compensator and you want the easiest way to do it. Speaking of that, I have the Ramjet Afterburner Barrel and Compensator Combo from Radiant Weapons as well on here and I wanted to see what spring weight would run best with the compensator. How flat can I get this gun shooting and maintain reliability? So I grabbed some profile slow-mo footage of shooting this gun with 124 grain standard pressure ammo with the three different spring weights that come with the compressor, of course, with the afterburner comp on there. So first of all, I just want to mention that if this video was a major motion picture, it would be titled Chasing the Dragon, the hair-splitting film. Because we are really chasing 1% gains in performance when you start messing around with recoil springs and there are going to be a lot of people looking at the footage of all three spring weights not seeing a difference at all. So just know to really notice a difference you have to be chasing that dragon of how flat can I get this to shoot. You have to be very persnickety to the point of being able to notice little minute details in shifts in recoil impulse which very well could just be made up in our heads. But nevertheless it's fun to play around with stuff like this. So obviously I have some more internal data that you don't have access to because I was actually behind the gun and feeling it 
but the first spring weight I tried was the 18 pound factory spring weight. And what I found with that is on the way back, the actual recoil impulse was very soft. I, I really liked that. But the spring was so heavy that on the way returning to battery, it would close a little too hard and cause the return to zero to dip a little low. So you're gonna see the gun bouncing a little low. Take a look at the footage. <laughs> Next up was the 15 pound recoil spring, which I found had a decent recoil impulse and a decent return to zero. It did not bounce on the return to zero nearly as much as the 18 pound recoil spring did. The return to zero was much better. The recoil impulse on the way back wasn't quite as soft as that 18 pound, but it was still very good. I liked the 15 pound recoil spring a lot. <laughs> And finally, uh, of course, I was really excited about the lightweight springs. So I want to get this thing shooting as flat as possible. Now, with the 13-pound spring, I noticed that the recoil impulse, the slide on the way back, got pretty violent. You'll see that this has the most muzzle rise out of all the spring weights, and it really made my dot just flop around like crazy. Now, the return to zero was beautiful. It was like butter. It was like a soft closed drawer in your kitchen but the muzzle rise was so violent, I mean, it was just slamming into the frame, that it was difficult keeping my dot on target despite the very soft close. So take a look at the footage and you will see that muzzle rise, but then that beautifully soft close. Now, in a perfect world, I would want the recoil impulse, the slide on the way back after the shot breaks, uh, to be the 18-pound recoil spring, and I would like the return to battery as the slide is closing again to be that 13-pound spring. But unfortunately, we do not live in a perfect world, and in a boring twist of events, we are like Goldilocks, and we're going with the middle porridge, and we're going with the middle bed. That 15-pound recoil spring is the best all-around experience for shooting standard pressure ammunition. On my own time, I tested it with 115 and 147, and came to the conclusion that that 15-pound recoil spring is the best overall spring for any kind of factory loads. I think to get the most out of that 13 pound spring, maybe you want to play around with a can or play around with light hand loads to get this thing tuned and shooting as flat as you can. But as far as factory ammo offerings go, both in standard pressure and plus P, that 15 pound recoil spring was the sweet spot for me. And while this is specific to the afterburner comp, I would imagine that this probably translates pretty well over to other compensators as well. If you have experience with that kind of stuff, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what your experience has been running comps and different weight recoil springs. I do also want to point out that I had 100% reliability with all spring weights and all loadings of ammunition uh, with the compressor and the afterburner compensator. So major kudos to Radian Weapons for creating a 100% reliable system. Now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I did run a topped off magazine of Federale HST 124 grain plus P hollow points through the gun. So check out how well this thing runs with plus P ammunition with the 15 pound spring. In conclusion, the compressor is awesome if you want the ability to quickly change out recoil springs and maintain compatibility with generation 3, 4, and 5 Glocks. Highly recommend it. Quality product along with the Afterburner. If you have not checked out the review for the Ramjet Afterburner yet, there it is in the upper right hand corner again. The place to be if you want to support the channel is in the description down below. The links are there. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video today. Hope you enjoyed. Many more great videos to come, so make sure that notification bell is hit, and you are subscribed, and you hit the like button on this channel, and you left a comment down below, and you said that you love me. It was great seeing you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out. Mm -hmm.